Hey family. So today is gonna to be the day that I am out here in the garden, finally deconstructing my beds. I've been planning on doing this for some months now and today I'm finally gonna get started. You guys can see the garden is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. My beds over here are pretty much completely empty and uh, let's see, I'm blocking them, aren't I? Look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start deconstructing those beds and uh, getting some of that stuff out of here so I can start on the new beds. So hopefully you guys will stay tuned and you will go through this with me. So I'll see you guys in just a few seconds. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. Don't forget, grow some trees, grow some food, grow something. Let's get started. So as you guys can see, as I said, the garden is just beautiful. I keep saying morning, but it's actually not morning. It is about 1130 in the afternoon. And look at this, everything is just doing so well. It is so beautiful. I really missed my garden in these two days that we were away, although we were down on the beach. And look at that, I come back to more gopher damage. I really can't stand this little guy. Do you guys see all of this? He is just tearing my lawn apart. But I'm gonna set traps for him again today. So see if I catch another one. But, um, Everything is just blooming and beautiful, and I cannot believe what I am looking at right now. You guys have got to see this. When I tell you guys, this little rat, this underground rat is literally tearing my garden up. Look at this. There are mounds. Oh my gosh, he's like covered up my agapanthus. Look at this. Oh, which means it went through there and it got all of the hyacinth bulbs that were down in there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this thing is destroying my garden. So I am thinking that that is going to be the first thing I do is I'm going to set traps. Look at this mess. Oh. Yeah, so change of plans. First thing I'm going to do is uh, open up one of these holes and flush it out and uh, just to piss this thing off. And um, yeah, I'm gonna set some traps down in there. And then I'm going to get over there and start deconstructing my beds, hopefully before it is time to uh, get my granddaughter from school. All right, guys, so I uncovered that mound. I found the hole. I started putting water down in there. And uh, <laughs> when I took the hose out, I put it over here. And I was going to stick the trap down in there when that thing came running out <laughs> ran across here I grabbed the shovel so I don't really want to show you guys but he's laying over there on the ground dead he was pretty large so um, still gonna stick a trap down in there and because um, there's always more of them so hopefully uh, this will give me a break for a little while, but um, that's one of the biggest ones I've seen in a while. So I don't know if that was a den or not because it actually came out of the hole that I ran the water in. They usually come out of another hole. But uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna be a big fat chicken and I'm gonna go and get the hubby since he's home today. And I'm going to have him put the trap down in there because I don't want to stick my hands in there now. The crazy thing is I should be looking for another hole over here somewhere just in case it came out of there. Good morning, family. Seems like once again, I am doing duties that I don't want to do. So right after I killed the gopher that same night, I kept hearing digging over here by the fence. 
and scratching on my roof. So not only is the skunk, or should I say skunks, uh, plural, awake and at it again, trying to get into the yard, but it looks like the roof rats are back also. So I set traps and I could hear them going off last night. Ah, so there's one on the ground. It's empty. And as you can see, something is trying to dig through there. But I kind of got a clue that the rats were coming across the top of the fence here. So that is where I set that trap because I can actually see a dark line going up the corner here. And it's usually a trail from the dirty underbellies of the rats. And I can also see that the trap over there above my window has also been tripped. So I'll be setting traps again today. Well, good morning. I love this little guy. See, these are the kind of visitors that I want. <laughs> they can come and visit me all day long. But uh, looks like I got dirty work to do today. And I need to cut the grass and I have to work today. So I'll give you guys an update in a little while. I'll leave you guys with peppers, yellow peppers. Look at these guys. That's the kind of mornings I want. And guess what we found this morning? Thing with roof rats, you gotta set the traps up high. Good morning, family. So last night, about 12 o'clock, I heard some popping going on out here. So I came out to check the traps and these two are still set, but I figured it's one of these. Uh, I don't have to go any further. Yes, there. The little guy is down there. See where the trap is. Where's the neighborhood cat when you need him? You don't just come through and drag a carcass off. But uh, yeah, they were eating my little apples. And uh, I'm hoping they didn't get any more last night. So I only had six apples on there and they ate three of them. But. I'll be back to get him. I'm going for a walk. All right, so I'm back from my walk. And uh, I am about to bury this guy. So usually, just throw him in the trash. But it's Thursday and our trash pickup day isn't until Tuesday. He's getting buried. To give you guys an idea how big these things are, these are not little field mice. They're pretty big. I call them baby kangaroos. And this is number four of this week. I don't know where these things are coming from but they're definitely coming from this side over here. And uh, I'm kind of tired of them. I don't want to put poison out because the kids are everywhere. And I don't want these things crawling off somewhere and dying. And then I gotta smell them because I can't find them. <laughs> so it might get to that point though. Just like I said, I'm tired of battling these things. This is number four this week. And, uh, I might have to try some different methods to see 
where they're coming from. I know they're coming, of course, for food, but uh, we haven't had any rats over here in years because of where we live and we're at the foothills of the mountains and there's lots of dry areas here and this is a dry area to begin with. It is conducive for rat breeding. They are everywhere here. And um, this area has lots of mature trees. The whole neighborhood is filled with mature trees and lots of mature fruit trees. So yeah, we kind of get roof rats around here. Hey guys, so it's afternoon and um, I'm pretty fed up with all these rodents around my house. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know where their nest is, but um, I need them gone and I need them gone quickly. So last night I was on YouTube, of course. You know, we got to do our YouTube thing. And uh, I looked up a video on how to kill rats and mice. And I watched a man who has a hobby farm. I will put the name of the channel down below. And um, he was making a concoction using baking soda or baking powder. I don't remember which one, but I'm going to use baking soda and a Jiffy corn muffin mix. And all he did was take containers, the little Dollar Tree containers, and he cut a hole in the side and he put equal parts of the corn mix and the baking soda in there. And uh, apparently the rats go in, they're attracted to the muffin mix, but with the baking soda mixed in and it gets into their stomach and the acid and the baking soda starts to bubble up. Apparently rats don't have the ability to burp or to fart. So it kind of builds up inside of them and uh, it kills them. So I don't really want a bunch of dead rats around my property, but hopefully their nest is far away from my house and they make it to wherever that is and they can die over there. So I'm going to mix this all up and I will show you guys the finished product. So my first step was cutting a hole in these containers, just a little opening. If you guys don't know this, rats and mice, they have a really unique skeletal system. It's really flexible. It allows them to flatten themselves temporarily, which is how they can get through the tiniest of cracks. If their head can fit into it, they can flatten their entire body to fit through tiny openings. So I didn't cut a huge opening. I don't want anything like squirrels or anything getting in there, um, but it is big enough for the rat to get in not too big, but uh, yeah, they can get through the tiniest of spaces. So that is step one. And then, like I said, it's gonna be equal parts of the muffin mix and equal parts of the baking soda. And then I'm going to tighten the lid on here and I'm going to place it outside near the back of the houses, which is where I keep finding them all back there. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in the morning. All right, so this is what it looks like once it's all mixed up. Just have the uh, muffin mix and the baking soda. Mix it as thoroughly as you possibly can so that it's all kind of even and mixed in there together. Rats are very picky on their food. They have been known to take a little nibble of this and a little nibble of that and you know, just to test it, to see how things taste. And it may take them hours to come back to it. It may take them days to come back to it, if they like it at all. You know, they're pretty smart creatures. So I'm gonna see if this works and hopefully it's not too salty for them. By the way, I never showed you guys, but um, I actually put pieces of raw potato on the traps. Because about, maybe eight years ago, our entire region had a roof rat infestation. So the whole northern section of our city had them and um, they got into our house. And what they went for was the bag of potatoes. So once I realized they enjoyed potatoes, 
we just started trapping them with that. But as you can see, I put one of the traps down there and another one over here behind the low quad tree to uh, lock it down and uh, wait for the popping noise. Good afternoon, family. It is another day of trapping things. Once again, I was up last night because I could hear the trap going off and I placed it right there. Unfortunately, there's nothing in it, but uh, it did pop it and it doesn't look like anything even took a nibble or a peek. Uh, something might be in there, so maybe something did go in. Give a little check. But, um, yeah, didn't catch anything last night, so I'm gonna try it again tonight. Good morning, beautiful people. I finally got to sleep last night. It has been two nights in a row and not a single popping noise at night and no scratching. Ah, uh, but look, I need to water. So, uh, yeah, maybe that stuff works. Not sure. Oh, something's been in them. But whatever it is, either they've moved on or that stuff is some kind of repellent. So it looks like today is going to be a good day. All right, guys, so we hired a company to come out and drop some bait all around. And uh, he's telling me how they like to go around the perimeter. So he's over here dropping bait all the way around under the hedges, in the flower beds. And uh, he says they are attracted to the bait. They take the bait, they eat it, and then they stay away from the area. So he's going all the way around. He's done all these beds over here already. And then he's going to hit the hedges over there on that side also. Good morning, family. So it has been an entire week with absolutely no rodent activity. So I'm happy to say that either they have found somewhere else to go or the tactics that we were using has worked. So I'm going to drop a link in the bottom also to... Uh, any of you who are here in Southern California that may be looking for an exterminator, you can use the ones that I used. They are out of the LA area, but they did come all the way out here for us and they did a wonderful job and I am so thankful and so grateful for them. Also, I will also link the uh, page down below where I got the cornmeal, the uh, muffin mix and the bacon soda ideal from. And then like I said, the rest are just rat traps and raw potatoes. So hopefully these guys have moved on to wherever they go <laughs> and they are out of here. The last thing I want to say is I know there is kind of a stigma with rats and things like roaches, water bugs and things like that. People tend to think that these are only things that happen to poor people or dirty people, you know, and you know, that is so wrong. It is like completely wrong. wrong. If you have a garden, you're going to get pests. The thing with rats, roaches, things like that, water bugs, they go where the food is. They want, they seek out food, they seek out hiding places. The same with water bugs. Water bugs are pretty much giant roaches. They are Japanese cockroaches. And you know what? They seek water and food the same way as any other animal. So whether your house is clean, dirty, old, new, or whatever, everybody gets pests. So don't be ashamed, take care of it, and move on be ready for the next time make sure you take all the preventive measures that you can and uh, i will see you all in the next video